I'm all in favor of the sleepers because not last year with Caleb Williams, but it seemed like every other year. Um, it wasn't a guy that was favored in the top 10 or top 20 that won the Heisman. It was the guys down under the sleepers that made something happen or that had a good game. Even, you know, Jaden Daniels at one point was up for the Heisman after what he did to Bama. And then I, they lost to Texas A&M and that kind of, you know, folded away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, um, I mean, you see the jersey in the back. We've talked about him already. Sam Hartman. I mean, Sam Hartman, look, you come in here, uh, you can transform the program. Right, you go in there. They haven't had a really good quarterback in a while since Ian Book, and the talent that Sam Hartman's had, you could argue, probably better than Ian Book. Six years, um, not a lot of. I believe Joel Klatt had a stat yesterday when I was watching the show about the quarterback position. He said how he they, they never even had one game over 300 yards passing. I think it was like 250 or 240. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> Ridiculous! It's insane. So I mean, you got Clemson, you got Ohio State, and you got USC. A lot of a lot of good tests for this team. So and for Sam Hartman, I'm all in favor. Sam Hartman, if they they win, they lose one game or go undefeated, I think he's got to be a sleeper pick that you look for for the Heisman. What about you, sir? Love that pick. I, like I said, I I think Notre Dame is a pivot team, um, not only for themselves but also for a bunch of other teams and how other teams kind of shake out. So I think that's a great pick. Sam Hartman is going to be a great fit. I think at Notre Dame, like you said, a few teams in the past have been kind of a quarterback away for Notre Dame, good defense, good running game, even I'll even say good receivers outside, but not someone to be able to distribute them the football. Mm -hmm. Um, Sam Hartman's thrown for over 12,000 yards in his career um, at Wake Forest. So now he bring in like a proven commodity with better athletes around him, a better defense to support him. Who knows? Notre Dame, they're going to be in a lot of football games this year. Yeah, and he's got a Beats headphones sponsorship, so he gave his whole team Beats headphones yesterday. Fire. When I saw that, I said, all right, this guy's got to be my sleeper pick. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what about my you? Sleeper, my sleeper, J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. Ooh. People are going to load up against Corman Edwards, the law firm of Corn Corman Edwards. Um, that'll allow for a ton of one-on-one -on -one opportunities outside for the receivers um, and also possible quarterback draw RPO options for J.J. McCarthy to pull it and run. Um, I think that the play action opportunities are going to be big. So downfield shots will be open for him. If he's able to maybe go 3,500, 4,000 yards uh, through the air, you know, mm -hmm. um, maybe 35 touchdowns, make sure he's in the single digits for interceptions and turnovers. Maybe adds, you know, 400 to 500 yards rushing because he is a better athlete than advertised. Um, I think he could sneak into the Heisman conversation, especially if Michigan is 11 and 1, 12 and 0, like people expect him to be this year. So just keep an eye on JJ McCarthy. I'm surprised you didn't say uh, bum ass Dylan Gabriel as your sleeper pick. Wow. Wow. You see the disrespect <laughs> that I got to deal with on this show? It's crazy. <laughs> No, oh, I'm a realist. Nice. When we get to my top 10 quarterbacks, you'll see I'm a realist. Oh, good segue, because that's actually yeah. next. That, 